everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About Today. Hope y'all had a great week. I'm glad y'all came by to stop and watch this new video we got. Hope all y'all are staying healthy and safe out there. Today, we got a brand new coral video. Now, while this is actually an invertebrate, we like to throw them in there with the corals because pretty much in your reef tank, you're going to have these anemones in there. So I like to keep them all in that same category. So today, we're learning all about the sea bay anemone. This one's been asked for a lot, so I had to get it out there right before the end of the year. So jumping right into it, the sea bay anemone will normally cost you about $40, normally a little bit higher or a little bit lower, depending on the size of them, care level. Now these anemones tend to be moderate to expert. I saw a lot of people having trouble keeping them alive online, and this really is because they need a well-established aquarium, a really nice reef tank to go in. They are not aquacultured as much as the bubble anemones like your rose bulbs and your green bulbs. So a lot of times you're getting them straight from the wild. So it's good to have an environment exactly like where they came from. And a lot of times that takes a tank that's one to two years old at least. Just one that's really well established and keeps good on the parameters. That way he's going in feeling fine. Temperature, you want to keep it about 72 to 78 in my reef. I like to keep it right at 78. Always like I'm more warm reef tank for them. The DKH, you're going to keep it 8 to 12. pH, 8.1 to 8.4. And your salinity, 1.023 to 1.025. And normally like it right there. Now colors on them, you tend to see sea bay anemones, the white ones with the real nice blue tips on every single tentacle or purple tips. Those are what everybody wants because it looks awesome, especially when they got some current flowing through them. It looks really cool. And then also some other ones you'll see are normally just a tan color and there's no dots on them, but they're still a sea bay. They get real big. It looks real nice too, especially whenever you have some clownfish swimming and hosting inside of them. Diet. So while they are photosynthetic, they're going to be feeding off the light. It's also really good to feed them. I would recommend feeding your anemone like frozen shrimp from your grocery store, just plain raw frozen shrimp, nothing spiced or anything crazy like that. Just some plain old raw shrimp. It's a great choice. You can thaw it out for them and you can cut it up into little bitty pieces. And once you drop it right on top of their tentacles, they normally will grab it for you and bring it straight to their mouth. It's really fun to watch. Now, this normally happens about one to four times a month. So, you know, normally about once a week. Also, liquid food, too. They will eat liquid food. You can see them soak in whenever you feed your tank like I feed oyster feasts a lot in my tank for my other corals and you can see my anemone soaking it up too so they'll eat that too now with feeding you kind of depends on your anemone that you get some anemones don't want to eat every single week so if you start feeding them a little piece of shrimp and then you come in there the next morning and he's done spit it out and it's floating around your tank definitely take it out and you just kind of got to watch and tell on how often he does get hungry and feeding them. Because sometimes you might only be feeding them once a month. Now with feeding them, this is going to help them grow really well. And it's also going to keep the health of the anemone up, which everybody needs. Origin. So most of these are going to come from the Philippines. So a lot of places online have them out of stock. They definitely can be hard to get during certain times of the year. Venomous, yes, they are an anemone, so they do have a powerful sting on them. They can even sting you. So when dealing with these, the pores on your hand tend to be too tight for that venom to come through, but they can light your forearm up bad. I'm telling you, they will light it up. So definitely be careful whenever you're cleaning your tank or in there moving some stuff around, because what that tends to happen and how I've gotten stung is I'll be in there cleaning and I'll be elbow deep in my tank and I'll just forget he's there. And then I'll feel him just brush up against my forearm. And once I take it out, man, it is burning. And a lot of times just some alcohol and some hot water will help that out. They also will sting other corals. Anything those tentacles are going to hit, they will sting the fire out of some corals. So you definitely want to find a spot in your tank that he has plenty of room to expand those tentacles out. That way he's not just lighting your corals on fire. Placement, that gets us right into it. So you can really place these guys anywhere in your tank that has a good flow, but they can get very large. So you definitely want to try to piece out where you can put them that he can grow and won't mess with your other corals. They tend not to move 
They tend to go where you put them whenever you first acclimate them into the tank. And they might move, you know, a couple inches up, a couple inches to the left, just kind of right in that area. But it's pretty rare that they'll actually just go to a complete other side of the tank. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. So once you put them somewhere, he tends to stay right there for you. Current, they normally like a medium to high current. A lot of current pushes the water through them and it makes it look real nice and it gives them a nice little flow. Now with that current, in a lower current, the tentacles will tend to bulb up, but in a higher current, they're going to be much skinnier and longer. So that's really just a personal preference. I know a lot of people, whenever they take care of their rose bulbs, they're like, man, I just can't get them to bulb up. And it's a lot of times because there's too much current on them. So if you really want that look, keep them in a lower current spot, but still need a good like medium flow on them. If shrinking or deflated tentacles start to happen, you'll know they're not enjoying that spot and you'll definitely want to move them somewhere else because it tends to be there's not enough current or there's way too much. Tank size, it doesn't really matter about tank size. It's mainly about having that established tank and then also having your parameters staying well. That way it's not hurting them. But on the other hand, they get big. They can get over a foot wide. So, I mean, you're talking like a massive anemone in your tank. So, you know, keep that in mind whenever you're actually wanting to get one of these in your tank. Lighting, they need some good, high, intense lighting. It always keeps them a lot healthier. The ones you're seeing right now are under Hydra 26s. Those LEDs keep them really happy, really healthy. If you are having trouble with your lighting or if you're not sure if your lighting on your tank will be able to sustain these, please throw it down in the comments. I'll be happy to help you with that. Sea bay anemones are a great anemone if you're looking for clownfish to host. Clownfish are really quick about hosting these. I do not know why, but they always get up in them. In the video, you'll see we have some baby clownfish that we just got in the tank, and they were swimming up in them. I mean, within the day, it was really fun to watch. In the wild, they host over 14 different species of clownfish, and even the occasional domino damselfish. It's wild. There's a lot of fish that can get up in these, so you shouldn't have a problem with your clownfish hosting these, no matter which kind it is. If you got maroons, you got tomato clowns, you got Clark eyes, any of those like that, they'll get up in these sea bays and swim around and it's always a joy to watch. Be patient if the anemone is moving, even if they are moving somewhere behind a rock that is out of the light, they will make their way to where they can get to some light. I promise you that. Moving the rock is only going to stress them out more and it's just going to cause them to keep moving because they can't find a spot that they like. Now anemone splitting, this is going to happen. It tends to be pretty random. I've tried timing it, but it really is just depends on the anemone. But I can tell you this, an anemone splitting more often is whenever you're feeding them, you got some ideal tank parameters. They're not jumping up and down. They're staying steady. And he's just overall healthy. He's doing good in the tank. He'll surely split a lot more often. Now, since these sea bays aren't aquacultured, you can definitely tell that they don't split as often. So you don't expect them to split like a rose bulb splits, where you'll get multiple of them throughout the year. Sea bays normally will just get really huge, and then you'll just have that one huge sea bait anemone in your tank forever. But when they do split, they'll actually end up growing two mouths beside each other and split apart, giving you two anemones. There's no fragging of anemones. There's no cutting them, anything like that. No, that's not going to happen with these. You got to just let them do their own thing. Now with this, their digestive cycle can cause them to shrink up very small. It can really freak out our customers a lot whenever they wake up and they just do not look good. This should not last longer than one to two days. They're just doing their digestion. It normally happens after you fed them really good. They'll stay shrunk up for the rest of the day, but then in the morning, they'll be up and happy like nothing ever happened. So just pay attention to that. If it does go over a couple of days, then you'll definitely know something's up. Other than that, I think we've hit on everything you could think of to take care of these sea bay anemones. While they can be a little harder to take care of, it's awesome to have these in your tank. Just make sure you definitely have a well-established aquarium. They will do much better that way. And make sure to give them plenty of room because I'm telling you, they will swell up huge. And they look great, but they can sting the fire out of some other corals around them. So make sure they're in a good spot where there's nothing around them and they can just keep flowing in that high current. And then also having that really nice lighting up top. Thank you all for coming out today. I hope you all have a great rest of the week. 
Make sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends. We're almost to 8,000 subscribers. It is amazing. So hopefully we'll hit that by the end of the year. Tell your family. Tell them to hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And I will talk to y'all later. Hope y'all have a good one.